idea. So rather than just sort of the two programmer buddies saying, yeah, it's going to be a game with big rockets and you know shotguns and uh, yeah, I mean, so you bring in those creative experts uh, to help you flesh out the world or flesh out the narrative. Uh, and, and certainly, we see in the U.S. a lot of companies are kind of going going that route to, to flesh things out. Yeah. Also, platform risk. You know, you might put up heavily for PS3, that, that's your big platform, and it gets off to a slow start. And right. uh, you're going down the wrong path, so to speak. Or, you, or your concept might be, you know, uh, you think it's heavily weighted to a, a really platform, and it's more suited to a PC platform. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if it's a company who's kind of overemphasized in one, uh, one particular uh, area. Uh, and, and somewhat related, I'll just sort of throw a couple in here, kind of related to the kind of the, the, the marketing uh, risk and the unknown market is also this kind of idea that uh, you know, the game industry is a hit driven, right? Hit driven. So you really have no way to, to sort of predict, you know, there's no way for you to know whether or not your new great idea is actually going to be sellable or relevant. Yeah, you had a, a easier, I think, if you have a license to tell prospective investors, okay, we've got Star Wars, it's going right. to sell, whereas you've got something just random that your house has come up with, right. Right? they're less likely to go with that. Yeah, and, and to some extent, it makes it easier for your publisher or investor to kind of bail, right? Whereas if the publisher has a contract with a movie company to release a game, I mean, that's this, they're kind of beholden to the licensor. And well, I mean, if you really screw up, they may move the production to the studio, but as a whole, the publishers will much less likely just sort of cut their losses because of that contract obligation they have over them in terms of working with the uh, working with the, the licensor. Uh, oh, okay, so I mean these are these are some of the risks uh, from a technical point of view, from a design creative point of view, uh, also from a uh, sort of market and business point of view. Uh, also, we didn't really touch on this idea of why it's so much to do with hit driven and so on. You know, many of the publishers are obviously public companies. They have shareholders they have to worry about. Uh, they have quarterly earnings, uh, and there's certainly a the desire for them to kind of push content into the into the channel on a fairly consistent and regular basis. Uh, and so there, there's certainly this kind of uh, overarching uh, uh, business risk uh, that's uh, that's involved as well. Um, okay, so so looking at all this, uh, a few months ago I called up my friends at NPD. I don't know to what extent, I don't know if NPD covers sales. Greg, do you know if they cover Australia? They may just be US based. Uh, so NPD is uh, uh, the firm that collects all of the retail sales data in the US and maybe Canada. I don't know if they do Canada or uh, not. And they collect sales data directly from all the retailers. Uh, so this is not based on sort of heuristics or you know surveys where they actually get the volume sales, sell through numbers from the actual. Uh, retailers, uh, and they have a massive database going back, you know, a decade or so, uh, with tons of sales data across all SKUs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, and they charge you an arm and a leg to get uh, to get that data. And, and many of the big publishers, by the way, uh, uh, subscribe to this, and they get like daily reports and monthly summaries and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, as developers, uh, you know, the publishers you're dealing with have all the track record of all the sale. I mean, at least anyways in, in, in the U.S. And I'm going to assume that similar entities exist elsewhere in the world to track uh, retail sales. I'm just not familiar with them, unfortunately. Uh, so if you go in and sort of say, well, my great new idea is a mix between this game and that game, right away they can look at their spreadsheets and kind of see well, what was the, the marketability, what was the sales volume, uh, and so on. And so if you walk in and say, oh, my game's going to be sort of the next eco, and it's going to be so cool, and, and you know, whatever, uh, and I don't even know if most people know eco. It's one of the best games ever made on, on PS2 by the way. So many guys. Uh, it bombed, right? It was a critical success, but didn't have volume, but it inspired many developers. So you may walk in and say, I'm going to be the next eco, and they're going to look and see five units. And it's like, <laughs> Thanks very much, you know, go, go dream somewhere else. Uh, and so when you're going for these, for, you know, when you're, whether you're pitching or dealing with publishers, they're looking at these numbers, they, they know all this data. Anyways, uh, it's not a sales pitch for NPD, I'm just sort of saying that this stuff is out there. Uh, I know some of the folks from NPD. Uh, and I got them to give me uh, sales data for the top 100 games across all SKUs or all platforms uh, since 2000. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't want to give me all the data because it was kind of a, a freebie just for me to, to fiddle with the numbers a little bit. Uh, uh, so, so, so that's kind of my caveat there that this is the, the numbers I'm going to show, the graphs I'm going to show are kind of based on the top 100. It doesn't reflect the entire scope from the number ones all to all the way down to the to the losers.
loses at the end. But uh, and so what I was trying to do was see if the numbers could tell me anything, right? Was there was there something from an economic analysis point of view, statistical analysis point of view, that really uh, demonstrated an obvious reason why publishers were leaning towards external IPs, uh, or all these risks that we described previously? How valid were they versus how sort of emotionally driven were they? Uh, and I was hoping that the numbers were going to uh, were going to tell me something. Um, and, uh, and also around the same time, I finished reading the book, The Long Tail. And who's read the book? Oh my god. <laughs> After this conference, you go buy this book right away. Uh, excellent, excellent book talking about, uh, well, primarily online distribution and so on. Uh, you know, digital, digital media, uh, games certainly part of that, less so from the retail point of view. Well, anyways, I wasn't prepared to kind of give you a summary of the, of the long tail, uh, but essentially looking how uh, via a digital distribution you're kind of unshackled from the restraints of physical media, unshackled from the limited shelf space at retail, uh, and essentially you have unlimited shelf space because it's all online, and then sort of this notion that you want to fill the channel as much as possible, uh, and then leverage filter tools, kind of Amazon-style uh, referral systems and you know, user ratings and so on and so on. Uh, but anyway, so, so that's a, a gross oversimplification of the, uh, the knowledge that's in, in that book, but I highly, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, and so from there, uh, they, did, they did something kind of, well, the, the long tail, uh, so the, the whole thing with the long tail is you kind of have the you know, graph like this, and this is uh, you know, units, and this is sort of sales or popularity. Uh, and the theory goes that you kind of have this uh, long tail, uh, that the hits, in any given industry, the hits are kind of very far and, and few between. They're kind of like the top 10% that reside over here, and then everything else sort of makes up this, this long tail of, you know, old, old classics and sort of very niche product. Uh, and, and the thinking goes that when you add up everything that's here in the long tail, it is actually bigger than what's over here in the, in the kind of the head. Uh, and that uh, when you're dealing with constraints of physical media, you, you get much less of a long tail because you're limited to like the bargain bin at the, the store and then what's sort of on the shelf. Whereas when you're online, it kind of, you kind of take away this, this constraint of the you know, physical versus not and you know, that opens up the marketplace and so on. Um, anyways, uh, so all that being said, Sort of loading up and trying to, to, to succeed on the on the uh, on the blue curve. 